In this video, we will look at um, two concepts. Uh, one is the lookup function and how we can use it to categorize uh, data. And the other one is a pivot table, one of the most useful inbuilt tools in Excel. This here is a list of all of our outstanding invoices to our clients that uh, they still haven't paid as at the end of the year. We have uh, the client code, uh, the invoice, uh, the amount, and the date that the invoice was issued. We'll prepare a trade receivables aging analysis because right now some of those may be overdue, but uh, it's kind of hard to just scroll through them and figure out what's going on. So ideally we would like to see it in a, in a really visual summarized way that uh, we can easily analyze. Just gonna go ahead and uh, create a copy of this sheet, and um, I always like to do that. So, just gonna rename it with under dash working. Um, it's a it's a good idea to retain a copy, a clean copy of your source data. It's always a great idea to have that because if you mess something up, you can always go back. So I'm gonna move over here in our working and uh, what I'll actually do is I'm gonna select the top row and uh, insert one row above it because we're gonna need some space here to type in a few things. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in a few more columns. So this is an Excel table. You see we have the table design here and uh, we can convert it to range if you prefer that. And range is just like cells. Um, and if, let's say, you convert it to range, see that now if uh, we add a new column, nothing happens and uh, it's not automatically uh, added and formatted with, uh, with the rest of our table. So what we'll do is uh, I'm going to go to the first um, cell here, press Control, Shift and the left arrow to select the whole header and as I'm still holding control and shift I'm gonna press the down arrow and I'm gonna select the whole table and then I'm gonna press control T to convert it to table and uh, make sure to check this here my table has headers and uh, we're gonna work with tables it's much easier and I'm also gonna change uh, my design to this one here it looks a bit more clean and um, the best part about working with tables is that right now, if we add a new column, it's automatically added to the table. You get to filter it with the drop down here, and it's also formatted in the same way. Okay, let's select this whole column and delete it. And um, add our first column. We're gonna calculate the maturity of our invoices first. Just gonna color it yellow just to know that that's something that I've added and it's not part of the initial data. And um, the maturity, we need the maturity in order to calculate how uh, many days um, each invoice is overdue because this should not be calculated from the invoice date because um, let's say Steedeman Dickens, uh, this client the, they received their invoice on the 1st of December. This is European uh, formatting. First is the day, then the month, and then the year. But uh, they don't have to pay it on the 1st of December. They have 60 days in this case to pay it. So all our clients, for the sake of simplicity, we will assume they all have 60 days to cover their invoices. So then the maturity is gonna be our date column plus our uh, maturity. Uh, days and uh, I'm using the arrows to move around and as I'm on uh, the maturity days I'm gonna press F4 and you can see the dollar signs that appear here this means that uh, this cell is gonna be fixed so if I move the formula down or to the side or whatever this cell is gonna change but this cell is always gonna be fixed and by pressing enter, you can see that it's all filled for me. And uh, what I just did is uh, those hash signs, they imply that not the whole number is visible. And this is uh, so that you won't have like some numbers being cut off. And uh, the way to fix that is to double click between the two columns and it's gonna size it properly. 
So we can see that this invoice was issued on the 1st of December 2020 and it's due on the 30th of January 2021. The next column I'm going to add is going to be our days overdue. So we want to know how many days exactly each invoice is overdue. Because uh, this, this really matters. If let's say our invoice is overdue with five days, it's not a problem. Maybe it's just not their paying cycle yet, or maybe they forgot or something like that. But if it's overdue like more than a few months, this can mean that they're struggling or they forgot about the invoice or any kind of other um, potential issues. And our cutoff date, the date to which we're going to compare is we're doing this analysis as at the end of uh, 2020. So it's going to be the 31st of December 2020. And the days overdue is going to be equal to our cutoff date. I'm going to fix that with F4 minus our maturity date. And uh, we get some issues here because this is formatted as a date. So I'm going to press Control Shift and down to select the whole thing and format it as a number. And I'm also going to hide the digits behind the decimal point because we're working with whole numbers here, number of days. So we can see that we have some negatives here and uh, this is fine. So this invoice is supposed to be paid on the 30th of January. So this means that at our cutoff date, they still have 30 days. That's why it's a negative uh, number here. But let's say this here was supposed to be paid on the 27th of December and it's now four days overdue. And this won't be a problem because they were probably not working around uh, Christmas and New Year, so they didn't pay. But uh, let's say this here that was supposed to be paid in uh, September and uh, this here in July and in June, those might be a problem. And uh, that's pretty much how we calculate our uh, maturity and our days overdue. And uh, in the next video, we're going to look at how we can categorize those so we'll be able to summarize them and perform our analysis.